Okay, in front of you, you have a sheet that looks like this, right? Yes, ma'am. And on this sheet that you have in front of you that looks like this throughout today's lesson, you are going to be filling out the three laws of motion. We've talked about them, but we really just dwelled on the first one. We kind of hit it on the second one and hit it on the third. But now we're just going to break them all down and see how they're all related. And then by the end of class today, you will be able to tell me the three laws and you'll be able to tell me exactly what the three laws are. There will be several opportunities for you to write down each law of motion. So maybe you may see it once and you say, oh, I didn't have time to get that down. Please don't panic. You'll see it again. You'll hear it again. But that by the end of class, you should have all of three of these filled. There will not be a time that I'll stop and say, write that down. But by hearing it and seeing what we're talking about, you should be able to get each law without a problem. Any questions? <coughs> Okay, so moving on from there, the first thing we're going to do is just going to watch a little video, which is going to allow Tim and Moby from Brain Pop to tell you more information about the um, three laws. And if you can catch something, you want to jot something down, that's fine. By the end of class, you should be able to put it in your own words, each law. So let's take a look. about Isaac Newton's three laws? Bring Jerome. Well, Isaac Newton was a scientist who lived in the 17th century. We don't have learning about him, so you should check it out. Anyway, Newton came up with the three laws of motion that can be used to explain how and why stuff moves. Well, yeah, these laws are still in use today, so I say he's pretty smart. Newton's first law states that an object in motion will stay in motion and an object at rest will stay at rest unless an unbalanced force acts on it. You probably won't think about it this way, but when a car is moving, everything in it and on it is moving along at the same speed. If the car has to stop suddenly, the objects in and around the car will continue moving forward. Guess we should have tied those on tighter. An object's forward motion will continue until an unbalanced force acts in the opposite direction to stop it. So, our seat belts provided the unbalanced force that stopped our bodies from moving forward. But these ropes only provide a lift force to balance out the ski's forward motion. Why didn't we keep going? Well, in this case, the force acting on the rock was friction. Friction is the resistance caused by any two objects in contact, and it always acts in the opposite direction of the motion. Newton's second law says an object that has an unbalanced force acting on it will accelerate in the direction of that force. When you're just sitting there, two forces are acting on you all the time. Right now, gravity is pulling our mass toward the center of the Earth, and the upward normal force of the ground is pushing up against gravity. We can sit here all day and go nowhere because these two forces cancel out. This hill is a different story. At this angle, gravity and the normal force are not canceling each other out. Gravity wins and we accelerate. The net force that's acting on us and making us accelerate is a combination of the normal force and gravity. Look, friction! Newton's third law is this. Forces always occur in equal and opposite pairs. When you push that door, it pushed right back at me with equal force. The door was the one that moved because friction between my feet and the floor combined my mass with the building's mass. The door is on hinges which decrease friction, so it accelerates open. Maybe you take out your roller skates. Or not. That's about it for Isaac Newton's laws of motion. I'm going to get Moby an ice pack. Okay, so now let's just do some review and some discussing. This should be Newton's first law there. All right, let's check our understanding by just looking at some things here. How many of you have ever been to a baseball game? I used to play baseball. How many of you have ever been to a baseball game on the moon? 
How many have ever been to a baseball game where someone has hit a home run? How many have been to a baseball game on the moon where someone has hit a home run? So I need a volunteer. Janiyah. We'll have enough. We'll, we'll have enough. Question for everyone. Raise your hand to answer the question. What is different on Earth? Meaning that what doesn't the moon have that the Earth has? Gravity. Gravity. And friction. friction. Wait, do have friction? Mass. Mass. Gravity. Air, 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 air resistance. Very good. So right now, Janai is going to put us on Earth by clicking that box because we want to have gravity and air resistance. She's going to, in a moment, tap the gentleman so that the ball will be pitched to him and he can hit the ball. And we're going to watch what happens to the ball during gravity and air resistance. Go ahead and hit. What happened to the ball? It flew. Charlotte. It went up and It went up and then the ball came down. Why? Because of gravity. What is gravity? Don't give me the definition. One word. What is gravity? One from one of our words up here. What is gravity? Sierra. It's a force because it is what? It is a pull, which pulls things where? Down. Down to the Around. to the center of the earth. So now Janiyah will take us to the moon by taking away gravity and air resistance. And then tap the gentleman for a pitch. Dun -dun 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 -dun. What happened to the ball? It kept flowing. Did it fall, Zoe? The ball did not fall. Why? Because there's no, it's, it's no air resistance. There's no air resistance, no gravity, which means there's no force, force, force pulling it down. Good job. Let's give her a round of applause. So with that being said, what is Newton's first law? Christian, help us out. An object at rest will stay at rest until an outside force acts upon it. An object at rest will stay at rest until an outside force acts upon it. That's one part. Based on what we saw here, what's the other part? Aisha. Exactly. What was the object in motion? Alyssa. What was the object in motion? The ball. What was the force that acted upon it? What was the force that acted upon it which stopped it from staying in motion? Gravity. Gravity pulled it down. The ball was at rest if we didn't see the person that was holding it, but then that person did what? Through it. That's a push, which put it in motion. Any questions? I'm going to be moving because we're going to be coming to it again. But you should be able to put it in your own words without trying to write my words. Newton's second law. This is in the way. Now try to describe Newton's second law based on what it is that we see here. So, for the most part, all of you do what? How do you get to school? You ride a school bus to school, correct? Yes. All right, and your school bus, does it just take you to school? Yes. They pick up other people. So I need a volunteer to be able to ride, drive this school bus. Come on, Ashley. Now, Ashley, what you're going to do... What you're going to do is, right now you're stopped, so you got to pick up a passenger. Hit plus. Go ahead and see on the thing. Sit in the chair. Hit the plus sign. Plus. 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 Go. She added a passenger. Press start. And we're going to look at the speedometer, which is there. How fast is this bus going? Well, let me ask you this. What is the number that the needle is pointing to on the speedometer? Janaya. 90-something. 90 90-something. 90 it's close to, I said close to 100. Now, for us, we may say that's fast. Maybe this is in Canada, and they're going kilometers. They're not going miles. So that's fine. Now we have to stop for a circuit. Hit reset. And then hit plus and plus twice so we can add two people on there. Go ahead. Come on here. It's the weight on the bus that's not slow. Ooh, is it? Is it weight? 
Because it's more mass. 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 All right, what's the nut the, the the needle point pointing to? Uh, 80, 80, something. 80, 80, 80, 80 something. Did the speed go up or down? Down. Down. Did the amount of people on the bus go up or down? Uh, up. Speed went down, amount of people went up. Let's try it one more time. It's slow because all the Three times. Okay. Start. Where is the needle at now? Okay. Did the amount of people go up or down? Up. Did the speeds go up or down? Down. You're getting reset. We're not going to anyone else. 40 is over. Okay. Based on what we saw, what happened? Plenty. We added a person, meaning when we increased what? Mass. Mass. Mass, because mass is what? Force. What is mass? It's weight. It's not weight. I mean, amount of something. The amount of what? Measure. The, you, it's not weight. You better look in those notes. What is mass? The amount of stuff in an object. What's the stuff on here? People. The people are the stuff. So we added more stuff, which meant it slowed us down. Correct? Like Janiyah with my bag when she broke it. More books. It slowed her down. She could not get pulled up fast enough. Correct? Same thing, if we think about a race car, like, give me a small car, guys. I know you know them. Uh, a BMW. So let's say we hop in a BMW, and you push your foot on that gas, that car's going to do what? Go fast. You're going to take off. Let's hop in a Hummer. And you push your foot on that, that gas, it's not going to zoom off as fast. It's going to take a little bit more because why? The mass. The mass is more. So the more mass, the what? The less speed, or the more what you're going to have to add to speed up? The more force. The more force you're going to have to add to speed up. What is speeding up? Acceleration. Acceleration. So what's Newton's second law? Based on what we saw, um, Tsunami. Give me another words based on this because you read that off, and I want you to be able to tell me in your own words. Because energy is applying a force. A force, okay? The more mass, the less speed. The more mass, the less speed. Acceleration. Acceleration, because this has to do with acceleration. Unless we do what? Add more force. Add more force. That's good. So our equation is force equals mass times acceleration. Newton's second law demonstrated there would be for a force, acceleration will decrease as mass increases. So when our mass increase, our acceleration decreases. But if we add, you'll, you'll get a chance. I'm going to keep talking so you can hear it now. If you feel like you can write it in your own words, great. If you feel like you have to copy this word for word and that doesn't make sense to you, do not write that because you have to make it make sense to you. Now, you said if we add more force, our acceleration will decrease or increase? Increase. It will increase. But if we start to add more mass, oh, yeah. then our acceleration will go down, which means then we have to add more force, force to get it back up there. All righty. Newton's third law. Can I have a volunteer? I think Okay, right. We're not going to touch this one because this one is acting kind of crazy. Instead, Keyshawn is going to demonstrate what is happening by going to that wall and then coming back. Everyone watch his feet. If you can see his feet or pretend like these are his feet and he is walking. Looking at him walking, he needs to tell us, uh, match the terms with the correct force vector. For instance, we have, for instance, we have reaction force and push push force. Push. Which one is the push force? The top one or the bottom one? You move it and tell us. Move, move you move these. Oh. Move these to where these belong. How many of you would say that's wrong? 
How many of you say that's correct? Okay, let's give Keyshawn a round of applause because he is correct. Take a seat. Now what happens is, as the gentleman is walking, what is happening? It push force. What is happening? His foot is doing what? Pushing the ground. Pushing the ground. Which way? Forward or backward? Forward. Backward. Backward. So that's forward. The ground is doing what? Pushing up to him. Huh? Pushing up to him, pushing which way? Forward or backwards? Forward. Forward. So those forces are equal in the amount of force, but the reaction is what? Opposite. So therefore, do not write this, because this makes absolutely no sense to you, but scientifically what is happening is when an object exerts force, meaning it pushes or it pull, the sec on a second object, that second object pushes or pulls back with equal magnitude and opposite direction. It is equal when we're walking because if my force was stronger than the force on the ground I'm walking, what would happen to me? If my force was stronger than the ground pushing on me, what would happen to me? I would fall because I would be pushed right through the ground. My force is stronger. If the force was stronger on the ground when I was walking, what would happen? I would bounce forward because the floor would push me further than what, stronger than what I am pushing down. So what does this mean? So when the object, basically trying to say when the object uh, push, like push a force, yeah, it will always be an opposite reaction. You, you got it, we got to clean those words up a little bit. What's Newton's third law? Well, I said when two objects um, spread apart, too many words. We should be able to get it just nice and crisp. Aisha, are you reading something? I don't want you to read anything. I want you to tell me right off the top of your head. That, that's good. A force is a push or a pull. That is also known as a what? That's starts with an A. Action. So for every... Action is a reaction. What kind of reaction? Equal and opposite, opposite reaction. And forces work in pairs. Because it is a pair. I push, the floor pushes. That's a pair. Only way we can get anything done, motion, because Newton law, Newton's law of motion, is there has to be something reacting. That's a pair. Any questions about this? Good? No, I'm not waiting because you'll come up again. I'm going to move on. How do you know if something is moving? Or if you're moving? Don't tell me you can feel it. Okay. Right. Um, Our brain tell us. What if your brain's not working? How do you know? How do you know that you have an action that you're doing? Let's say this. How would you know? How would you know if I was moving? If you left the room, how did you know if I moved or not? Yo, see you see me because you was here and then you remember say, now you're gone. I was here and now I'm gone. What changed? Yeah. My acceleration. Oh no, your your place. Place. What changed? My what? Place. My place. Good. My location. This is how you know if something is moving. Your position or your location changes. We're not writing anything now. We're just listening. What is position? You said it. The place, location, your spot. That's position. What type of words do you use to describe someone's position? Stay in place. What type of words would you use to describe like where they are, their location? In a line. Okay, you may say they're in a line. If I was saying where Alyssa was in relation to where Janiyah is, what type of words do we use? Um, at well, so, well, don't let's not talk about science. Someone comes to your house. Where's your mom? Upstairs. 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 So use words like up yeah. or down. down. Right up. in the middle, right? Right in the middle. All of those things. Those are down words right. that we use to describe location. Oh. So in using words to describe location or relationship, where is the tree in relation to the house if you are facing the house? Left. To the left. To the left. So if you're looking away from the house, it would say to the right. To the right. 
So it's important that we are able to describe the position of something so that we can move on with Newton's law of motion because motion changes if a position changes. So we can then use grad, grids, like in math, to describe a position. So for instance, where would the green block be located? Using the information from the grid, what is the position? Yes, Senor. 5D. Let's take the magnifying glass and check and see if she's correct. She's she is. There. Correct. Where would the blue square be? Alyssa. 7J. So you guys are good with reading and writing. Same thing. It's fine. It's fine if you say the same thing. All right. Moving on. How can we tell that the plane is moving looking at this? How can we tell, Zoe? Because the plane is going upwards. It's increasing. But how do we know? You have to raise your hand. How do we know that it's moving compared to compare, you're looking at this graph, Teray? It's getting higher and higher. Okay, it may be getting higher and higher, but how do we know that that's telling us that the plane is moving? It has a different position every time. Different. So therefore, we can say that the bottom, because if we see the tree down there, we know that the bottom of the graph, which is what axis? Y. This is the x axis. We know that that represents what? The, the, the crowd. The, the amount the, of. Uh, independent. Uh, independent. Yeah, but what does this represent? The, At one point it was on the ground, now it's. The time. Ascending. The rate. It is ascending, rate, but where, is it in the, the same location? No. No, what's changing? The time. The location. The, location, the position is changing. So this is a position over. And over. Over what? What is the x, the y axis? The latitude. The distance. Oh. Over a certain amount of what? Position. Time. So the y axis is time. And this would be position. So over time, the position is changing, which means that it's moving. Correct? Yes. All right. Moving on. What is speed? What speed, Isenia? The um, velocity Okay, but tell me what speed means. How what? How fast something is going. Any object moving, the speed is how fast it's going. Uh oh, that. Let me go back. Whoa. So speed is found by dividing what by time? Listen, think about when you're in the car and you're talking about how fast you're going. What do you say? What do you say? Distance divided by time. If you're in the car and your car says 65, it's saying 65 what? Miles per hour. Miles per hour. Which one is mi which one is miles? The <laughs> what is miles? Is the distance. Hour is the time. time. Miles per hour. Distance divided by time. So, for example, if an airplane travels 250 miles in one second, what is its speed? 250 what? Miles per hour? Miles per second. Don't get the hours confused because of the simple fact you're thinking about a car. So now you should be able to do this in your head. Do not yell it out. Remember, you're dividing distance by time. How fast is the runner running if the runner travels 30 yards in 5 seconds? Sierra. It's going 30 yards for 5 seconds, so that can't be correct. Yes. Oh. Sanavi. One, he's going 6 yards in 1 second. 6 yards per second. You're, you're taking 30 and you're divided by time. The distance divided by time. It was 30 yards divided by 5 seconds gives us 6 yards per second. Everyone got that? Yes. How fast is the Ferrari going? If the Ferrari is traveling 150 miles per two, every 2 hours. How fast is it going? You need to raise your hand and let me call on you. What did you do? What did you do? So what did you do? What did you do? What did he do? He divided what? Which is the distance divided by the time. So the Ferrari is going 75 miles per hour, which is not very fast for a Ferrari, but it is still fast. Okay. Moving on, just to get our minds still wrapped around it, what is this talking about? 
If we start to talk about speed and direction, what are we talking about? You should know your vocabulary words. Speed and direction, what are we talking about? Don't ooh me. Laisha. You need to get in your notebook because it's in there. This is not new. This is review. Momentum. If we're talking about speed and direction, what are we talking about? Keyshawn. No, I need an answer when I'm calling you. Nope. Uh, nope. Velocity. What? Velocity. We're talking about velocity. We talk about how fast something is going and what direction they are going. We are talking about velocity. velocity. Aisha, what's going on back there? We need to get it together. <laughs> when is velocity of two objects the same and when is it different? Well, if we have two objects that are traveling at the same speed, but in different directions, what's going to be different? The speed. What's going to be different? What's going to be different? Their velocity is going to be different. Their velocity is going to be different. I already said their speed is the same, but different direction. If they have different velocities, they can have different velocities if they're traveling in the same direction, but they have different speeds. Because velocity is your speed and the direction you're going. Yes. Having this information, how can they have the same velocity? Okay, uh. How can they have the same velocity? Look at this information. You should be able to come up with a conclusion from there, Kishan. Again, I'll say it again. If they have the same speed, traveling in different directions, velocity is different. If they have a different speed, Traveling in the same direction, velocity is different. What would make velocity the same? It's the same speed. Same speed and? It's same, same direction. Same direction. Same speed, and you say it as if, Miss Wiggins, duh, well, how come you guys didn't say that in the very beginning? Uh, yes, so same speed, same direction, same velocity. Moving on, what is acceleration? This is review. What is acceleration, Zoe? Uh, to accelerate to go, to go faster. To go faster, to speed up. Acceleration speed is up. speeding up. Honey, speed up. To change velocity uh -huh. is acceleration. That is speeding up. How do you change your acceleration in a car? How? Stepping harder on the gas. How else can you change your acceleration in a car? By pushing the Stepping on the brake. On the brake. That would be considered. The acceleration, because now we're slowing, that, slowing down. We're changing the speed. All right. What affects acceleration? It means how fast something is going. What does this boy need to do in order to get up the hill? Alyssa. He needs to pedal. That's, the, that's what he just needs to do to get up the hill. Pedal. What is pedaling? Doing what? It's a force. But he's going uphill, so he's pedaling hard. What if we add textbooks to his book bag? What does he need to do now, Zoe? Yeah, he has to pedal, pedal, stand up. pedal faster and oh, harder. Yeah. And the reason why you stand is so you can put more force on there. Is that effect an acceleration? Yes. 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 He has to put more force. What also affected that acceleration? We added textbooks, meaning we added more what? Weight. Mass. 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 Looking here. Sir Isaac Newton understood that about acceleration. He knew that acceleration wasn't just the force. It had to do with mass as well. That's going to affect acceleration. Looking here, we talked about relationships constantly in labs. What is the relationship between acceleration and force? As force does what? What is force increasing? What's happening to acceleration? Increase. It's increasing. As force increases, acceleration is increasing. But acceleration is not just force. It also has to do with mass. If we increase mass, is mass increasing here? Andre, stop it. Mass is increasing here because over time mass is getting bigger. But what's happening to acceleration? It's decreasing. It's decreasing. If we want acceleration to increase, what do we have to do? We have to add more force. But if someone comes along and puts more stuff on it, acceleration is going to? Decrease, and then we have to add more, add more force. force. You see how that works? Yeah. Like okay, very good. What are balanced forces? Give me in your own words. Balanced force, Sierra. Uh, 
<laughs> what are balanced forces? Two equal forces that cancel each other out. This young man right here is pressing against the brick wall. What is the brick wall doing to him? Back. It's pressing back. Is it equal force? Yes. Yes, because if it wasn't, he would fall through the brick wall or the brick wall would knock him down. Right? Yeah. Unbalanced force, what is that? Ooh. What's an unbalanced force, Laisha? Forces that are not equal, which means one is? Meaning it's stronger or weaker? Stronger or weaker than the force, which is why the ball moves when you kick it. When we kick the ball, we are pushing the ball, but the ball is also oh, no. the ball is also doing what to our foot? Pushing, pushing. It's pushing it back, but is the force strong enough to not move? No. No. The force is pushing us back, but our force of our foot is stronger, which is why the ball moves in the direction that we want it to go. Any questions? <laughs> because that means that the force is not strong enough. So for Newton's third law, what does it say? What is Newton's third law? Aisha, what's Newton's third law? You, we should have this now. Newton's third law is every action there is an opposite equal reaction. And an action would be anything that is a push or pull or a force. Good. So, for instance, here, doing a push-up. The little baby's doing a push-up. Or let's say you're doing a push-up. What is the action? The action is that he pushed. What's the action? But what's the action? What, what is happening? What's He's moving up and down. How? By moving his own force. Any force. By pushing. He's pushing the floor down. What's the reaction? Uh, That's not the reaction. He's pushing the floor. What's the reaction, Sierra? The floor is pushing him back up. Is this Newton's third law? Yes. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. If it was not equal, what would happen to that baby when he pushes he that floor? He would either push right through or the floor would push him, up. Push him totally far forward like a trampoline. That's not an equal force. It's an opposite one, but it's definitely not equal because when you jump on it, what happens? It bounces you all the way up. All right, Newton's first law. Give me Newton's first law, please, Derek. An object in motion stays in motion. An object at rest stays at rest unless a force acts on it. Very good. Oh, let me change it. That is also known as the law of inertia. Inertia. Did you make this law? <laughs> What's Newton's second law? Ashley. But we have to include some other words in there because we know that F equals? Force. F equals, what's the equation? Force, force times, times acceleration. No, nope. F is force, which equals? Force equals mass times acceleration. acceleration. So we need to include those things. Mm -hmm. uh, Delaney, give me Newton's second law. The more mass, the less acceleration. Newton's second law is also known as? Newton's second law is also known as? Look at your papers. Law of acceleration. To increase acceleration, we must increase force. Any questions? Newton's third law. Guillermo. What's Newton's third law? Zoe, help us out because we need to move, General. You need to pay attention. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Newton's third law is also known as? The law of action and reaction. The law of? Action and reaction. Very good. Any questions about this? Okay. Got it? All right. You should have been able to fill out all three laws of motion. To get your mind back around what these three laws are and to help you remember what those three laws are, we're going to watch a short video. Stop it.
Now you are ready for your next assignment, which is Newton's Law Projects. You are going to be able to select a group member. What was it that you were supposed to have today? What were you supposed to have? What was scheduled for today? A test? To do our homework. What was scheduled for today? A test. However, me giving you a test and multiple choice is not going to show me you really know anything. You showing me and using your creativity will show me what you know. So you are going to do a project with a partner. In a moment, you will pick a partner of your choice because the options that you choose here, are, don't look around, look here. The options that you choose here are going to be something that maybe you're comfortable with doing. So I want you to be able to be with a partner that has same likes as you so you guys can work together and doing a good job and knowing the three laws. Our objective for this is for you to demonstrate your understanding for these first, second, and third law. Your options that you'll have are your comic book or children's book, a video or simulation. What that means is for a video, maybe you're at home because you don't have to work with a group. Maybe you'll work by yourself or maybe someone will come over to your house. You can do a video of yourself, maybe making a music video like the one you saw there or maybe making a commercial or something like that or an everyday scenario of something. A simulation, some of you have Sims or a Little Big Planet or something that you can work on your computer to create some type of simulated thing to show. That's an option. Then there's a skit, a demonstration, a song, or a rap. You can choose one of those. A skit would mean a play that you would put on or writing a song or a rap. Or you can do a PowerPoint. But let's say you think of something else like, oh, how can I do this, Miss Wiggins? Because there's things that I don't know that are available for you to do. And I'll say, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. You can do that. Everyone must have a speaking part for presentation time for you to get any credit for that. Um, next, if you look at your rubric that you have in front of you, it looks like this. Right now on your rubric, you need to put your name in the name spot where it says your name. When you choose your partner, you will put your partner's names here. You must turn this rubric in on the due date. If you do not, and I have to provide one for you, that's five points off. So you have to keep up with your rubric. You will have to take your rubric home with you every day, and you probably have to take your notebook home with you every day to get the information that you need, but you must have your notebook back to class the days that you need it. All right, moving down. Shh. I've already told you the objective is for you to demonstrate your understanding of the three laws. Each spot... You're not doing all of these, you're only doing one. So whatever one you do, that's the rubric I'm grading you on. So the first one is the children's book. You, if you're going to do that, pay attention to what's expected of you in there so you can get all fives for excellence. The next one is a video or simulation. Pay attention to that so you know what you can get for all fives. The third one is a skit or demonstration. Add 
to the third one, song or rap. I forgot to type that in there. If your rubric does not have that, add that. For the third one, you need to make sure you add song or rap. In addition to adding that, if you look at the third spot on there, it says presentation is at least three to five minutes long. It says five minutes on yours, but make sure it says three to five minutes long. And make sure you look at all that for you to get five on that. And then the last option is a PowerPoint. It tells you a minimum of five slides, but I don't want any more than 10. We don't want to be bored. So you should be able to do it and all of that. Then if you look at the very bottom, it gives you some more criteria. Your presentation, whatever thing you choose, must include all of this because you're covering all three laws. So you must make sure you mention force and motion. You must make sure you mention Sir Isaac Newton because he's responsible for all of this. You must make sure you mention the first law, second law, and third law, explain what it is or show what it is, and then all of these other things that are in there that covers that. Any questions about that? You have questions about what I said? If it's an individual question, just hold off for a second. The last thing I want to explain to you is your presentation process and how you can work with the partner. You do want to make sure that you bring your smart technology to class. Your cell phone, if you have an iPad or an iPod or something like that, bring it to class because I will try to work in time at the end of the lesson for you to work on this. It won't happen every class, but I'll try to do as much as I can so that if you, that time is available, you can work in class <clears throat> Excuse me to do that. Don't bank or count on me giving you time. You must also need to be using your outside of class time to be working on it because I may not give you the time. Got it? All right. With that being said, there is something called Google Drive. Flip your rubric over to the back. On the back, you want to write Google Drive. G-O-O-G-L-E and then drive, like driving a car. D-R-I-V-E. Together? You, you can just write down the two words. If you're going online on the computer, to you can... Um, download the app onto your phone and it'll be Google Drive on your phone and you can access all of your documents. What Google Drive is, it is a online storage. So you don't have to have a flash drive or anything like that. You start something here, you can finish it working on it on your phone. You can work on it at home. You can work on it at your aunts, your moms, your uncles, your fathers, wherever you are without having anything extra. All you need is internet access. That's, isn't that fun, cool way to have things? So you don't have to have a, a flash drive. Google Drive also allows you to share stuff with your partner simultaneously, which means that you can work on it and they can be working on it at the same time and you can see exactly what they're doing and they can see what you're doing. My husband and I have a business. I upload stuff or type stuff in on our business information in Google Drive. If he needs to go in and see what's going on, he will see it at the same time that I've done it or he will see what I've done. That's fine. You have, we'll have computers in here that you can work with. You have a computer at home. That's fine. Okay. So if you're accessing Google Drive from a computer, you will put google.com slash drive. I'm just going to show you here. If you're accessing it from your phone, you would need to download the app. You're going to set it up for your school um, account that you have here. So I'm going to make sure you all have that information now. Your account is your first initial. On the back, you need to be writing this. Don't write first initial. Actually write your first initial. So, for instance, mine is T. Does it? No, it doesn't need to be. It's your first initial and then your last name. So, of course, I'm T. Wiggins. Then it's the last four digits of your student ID number. If you don't know the, the last four digits, write the whole thing down at the bottom and circle the last four. It's the last four digits of your student ID number. I'll do one, one, one next. That looks easier to see. Last four digits. Don't put zeros. You put the last four digits of yours. It's the same thing of your student ID number. Okay, you'll have to get that from me in a moment. If you don't know it, I can get it for you. So again, it's your first initial, your last name, 
the last four digits of your student ID number. And then it's the at symbol. Just leave four dashes for yourself, Janiah, so you can put it. And it's at gaggle. I'm sorry, I apologize. No, no, that's not that's not right. At I'm sorry. It's at CMS. I apologize. Dot gaggle. So it's your first initial, last name, last four digits of student ID number at cms.gaggle.net. Your password, it is, don't write this yet, it is the year, month, and date of your birth. So Seth, for instance, your birthday is December 24th, 2000. Your password, the year is 2000, but you're only doing the last two digits, so it's 00. zero. The month is December, so that's 12. And the date is 24, so that is your password. Question? Why is it backwards? That's just the way it is. Okay. And then we'll work, once you get that uploaded, I'll work with you to see, show you how you can have, share, um, share your documents. But in logging in, and I am logged in, I'll show you what it looks like. Once you log in, it looks like this. And from here, you can create stuff like a Word document and put that, open that up and type in it just like normal. And you can share it with other people like you see here. Mr. Barnes has shared some things with us. And this information, he has shared with all of us. We open it and we can type things in it at the same time. And you can upload documents from stuff that's already on whatever device you're working with. Any questions? Okay, then I'm going to conclude this lesson.